Okay. Welcome back. So how's everybody with the timing? Like if I go, I'm not sure where I'm going to go with all this, okay? I never know. But, but it's, it's kind of fun for me too because I never know what I'm going to say. So it's nice to kind of hear new information. It comes, it comes through differently depending on who shows up. So it's kind of fun. I don't have like a mechanical way in which I teach. It's like who's there, what, what kind of information comes through in the moment. It's fun. It's cool. So you guys, you need to leave at 9 o'clock. Anyone need to bust out of here at 9 o'clock? Okay. <laughs> Let's just see where it goes. I'm not sure, again, like wh what we're going to get into. But if I'm getting into some juicy stuff and then it's nine o'clock, sorry, bye. <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to cut it off. Um, okay, so we're good with that? All right. Very good. All right. Where did we leave off? Pardon me? Difficult pose? Oh, that's where I left off? Wow, okay. Parvritta Parshvakanasana. So, banana leaf, yeah, not written in that. Okay. This is something that's um, it's grown over time. Patabi Joyce's center was called Ashtanga Yoga Research Institute. It's no longer that. It's now Krishna Patabi Joyce Ashtanga Yoga. Period. Trademark. So the research is done, apparently. <laughs> and in, in my eyes, it hasn't, it doesn't ever stop. Actually, I would love to call our center in Bali Ashtanga Yoga Bali Resource Center. Isn't that cool? I think that has a better ring to it. Because basically what you're doing is you're resourcing. And the resource is... <laughs> where is it? <laughs> Hello? Where is the source? Where is the source? It's not in my source, not in the Himalayas, it's not in... So it's inside yourself. <laughs> so resourcing means when you learn something, when you read something, when you... It's about putting you back in that place of exploring inside. It's an inside job, right? That's, that's what you got to get. Now, that doesn't mean you go and listen to a Prem talk or someone else talk or the book and the book. All that stuff is relevant, right? It could be very timely, isn't it? Like you hear something, you go, that was really timely. Like a coincidence. <laughs> Do you believe in coincidences? No, it, it's, it's supposed to happen. It's like, what we're really doing is we're co-creating according to what we need to, to discover. That's really what it's about. Did you have a question? Do you have something you I wanted to... I had a question before the break, and I think you were too scared for my question. Oh, was I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not scared. I but, was, you were talking about seeking. Yeah. And, uh, years ago I was caught a little bit in seeking and yeah. then I found out and figured out that it's more about opening up for it because something is already there you yeah. don't have to seek for it you that's right open up for it. There's, a, there's a very ancient aphorism from India that all of you have heard I'm sure when the student is ready the guru appears the teacher appears you ever heard that? <laughs> so if you're out seeking then you're a sucker when you're running here you're running there you just have to like, just from that place, like, I really want to know. Boom! You get an email. You get a book, you know, a, a, a message or whatever. Then, then you follow that, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the insights, your intuition. Your intuition happens in a flash. It's just like, boom! Out of nowhere. It's not something you think about, right? Love is like that. It's like, oh my God, I just love you so much. And it's like, I don't know why, but, <laughs> right? When you fall in love, it's like, what's the expression? Love is blind, right? You just have this feeling, you know? But it's not just this one-on-one -on -one thing. 
That's what I was saying. This unconditional love that you very rarely see is really, it's so rare. It's so rare to be unconditional. Have you ever tried to be unconditional in your love? It's a nice concept. <laughs> it's like, I love you. Uh, it, you're supposed to say, I love you back? <laughs> oh, you don't love me? Well, then I hate you. You know, it's like a business deal. I give you this, I give you that, I give you some chocolate, you think I'm wonderful. Oh, well, you're so wonderful too. And then you have your first fight, you know. So it's not a, it's not a transaction like that. Love happen, happens spontaneously. It's like overflowing. It's like the example that uh, my teacher Ishwar uses. He said, it's like raining outside. It's raining. You put your bucket like that. You put the bowl like that. Any water going to get in there? Is any water going to get in there? No. Any water going to get in if the bowl is sitting like that? Maybe? <coughs> maybe, maybe a little bit. So, when this settles down and it's turned up and it's raining, is it going to fill up? Of course it is. And then what happens when it gets full? It overflows. It over when you're so full, when you're so filled up, you have to share. It doesn't come from a lack. <laughs> All the things that we hear about, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to give to the blah, 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 and blah. Those are good, but if you're empty, if you have no juice inside of you, then you're a martyr. Then you become a martyr. That's what's the understanding of yoga practice, of Ayurveda, of eating. You get juicy, more full. In Ayurveda, it's called ojas. Ojas is like the juice, the essential juice that you need to operate in this mechanism. If you don't have it, your energy is just like drained. So you need to, you need to learn how to get juiced up. And Ojas is the essential juice that's important from nutrition, from good lifestyle, from correct yoga practice, etc., etc. And it's very specific to each individual. Did that answer your question? Yeah. You see, it's like you can't run around looking. You won't find, it'll be right in your face and you'll walk right past it when you're in that kind of thing. Come back, center, calm, might take some time, <laughs> right? Most people that try to sit in meditation my friend calls it mad attention. <laughs> it's not meditation. It's like, Jesus, what is that? It's like two minutes? Ah, man. People can't sit for five minutes. It's just like there's so much in their body, in their mind. It's so restless. That's what, that's what yoga's chitta vritti means. Yoga's chitta vritti. Vrittis are like this kind of energy that's just Phonetic, like the buzzing, humming. Those are vrittis in your mind, in your body. So yoga has the ability to pacify, calm the vrittis. When the vrittis are still, it's like a calm pool. You see a calm pool, a pond? You can see down in it. It's clear. You can see the bottom. You walk through it and... It gets all muddy and you can't see anything. Those are vrittis. There's a lot of vrittis going on. All the magnetic stuff and the cell phone stuff that's going. But if you have good ojas, you can maintain it. It's almost like you get like a bubble. It's like a protection almost. Not like this. Oh God, I can't, you know. No, you can live freely in the world. You can be of the world, but not of it. You see, you can interact. It doesn't mean go escape and live in the mountains or the jungle or whatever. You have to be able to live in the world. You have to make money. You have to do all the stuff. Most of us are householders, right? You know what a householder is? Someone who has a family, kids, 
going to work, doing the thing. And then there's the recluse, very rare. But some, there are some of those people that really need that. And they can honestly do that. I tried it. And all I thought about was like pizza and whatever, you know? <laughs> like sex and pizza and whatever. <laughs> it doesn't work if you're not ready to have that, if it's not part of who you are. You see, it has to come naturally. It's not run away. It's like live right here, right now. Like a warrior, spiritual warrior. Not like cutting people's heads off, but like take a stance. One of the most serious talks I've ever had with my daughters is I sat down with them when they were teenagers. It was very interesting. Because they're like, oh God. You know, like a serious talk from dad. <laughs> like, how's that going to happen? <laughs> so I said, look. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been like really, I, I've been like their, one of their best friends. And then like, don't put your finger in the socket. You know, don't run out in the street. I took care of them. I protected them. You know, I was responsible for them. But I said, look. I said, I said, honey, look, the world is made up of a lot of weird stuff. And it's primarily run by men. So it's a male world. And I said, as women, you have to be really powerful in yourself. And stand up like a real woman. Don't enter into the man's world like a man. Be woman and strong and emotional and all the things that you, that you women do. But be strong. Don't let a man control you. Do you understand, you ladies? Because men are like, they, they just have, most of them just are a one-track mind, right? And it's down here. And it's all about that. It's just biological. They just want to procreate, you know. like. So it's, it's an energy. It's an energetic thing. They don't know what to do with it. That's the transformation that can happen in Tantra. If you can activate and move the energy and circulate it, then you're good. If it's all stuck there, you just want to explode from here. So that's the art of moving the energy and circulating it for the men. They don't know how to do it. <laughs> they don't know how to do it. But I work with young men. I work with young men in different ways. And it's like, if they get it, they're so powerful. And the women too. I mean, primarily, as you can see, mostly women come to yoga classes. So I'm constantly working with women. I was just in, uh, where were we? What was that? Goose. Goose. I don't know how you get goose out of that. It's G-O-E-S. It's goes. Goose. You guys are so funny. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't get how you get goose out of that. Yeah, but the, but the people living there say huh? the, the people uh, living there, they say goose. Hoos. 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 Yeah. Hoos. So you know where it is, right? I was just in Hoos. And there was, how many people there? 50, 60 people? Like All women. There was two guys, maybe. Me, me and Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically it. And the rest were women. It happens all the time. Constantly. It's like, where are the guys? When I first started practicing Ashtanga, it was like 50-50. And then the guys started whittling away, and then there was more women coming, and then it's like, now it's, you know, around the world, it's mostly women doing yoga. Men are so dense, they don't get it. They, it's really funny. And I'm a man, and I know. I'm talking from experience. We're just a little dense. And we're a little bit too much external. We have external plumbing. <laughs> right? So we're kind of like... Oh, and women, you're more internal, and you feel things internally. You're deeper, fuller. Like even Mulabanda for you, it's up inside the yoni. It's in the. Can we say that on TV? Um, <laughs> we're all adults here, right? We can say vagina and penis and things like that. So it's up inside the yoni. A yoni is a Sanskrit word for vagina. Okay. So the anatomy of a woman, the Mulabanda is a little bit deeper up inside you. That's where you can feel it. And a man is more superficial. But it's still there, centered in the pelvic floor. It's almost like a ball of energy. <laughs> they speak of like the energy that's, that's lying latent at the base of your spine like a snake, like a cobra, right? It's like the image of a cobra down there. And then when you do Mulabanda, what, you, what are you doing? Hello. <laughs> Hello, little snake. You're waking up the snake. What does the snake do? Have you seen that, that image of, uh, it's called the caduceus? 
the staff with the two snakes that weave around the, the staff. It's a symbol in, um, in America, medical doctors have it. They have like Dr. Crown, you know, with the sting and the medical symbol with the staff and the snakes. That's Kundalini. That's the spine. And the snakes are Ida and Pingala at the base of the spine. Muladhara chakra. And then it goes second chakra. And then third chakra. Fourth chakra. Fifth chakra. And it goes through both nostrils. Right is Pingala. Left is Ida. Heating, cooling. Right hemisphere, left hemisphere. Right hemisphere of your brain operates what part of your body? The left side. The right side. I'm doing my practice. I can feel my hands, my arms, my legs. Centering, balancing. Where does the energy go? It goes here and in. So it's critical how you hold yourself. And then you conduct the energy through here. From Mulabandha up. Uddiyana Bandha means flying upwards. If you're just doing Mulabandha, you're just kind of stuck down there. Patabi Joyce used to call it, you take it anus control. <laughs> it's like anus control? What are you talking about? It's like you control your anus. <laughs> How do I control my anus? <laughs> no, seriously, he said that. We were like, what? Anus control? <laughs> Yes, Mulabanda, you take it, you take it up your anus. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm not taking up the anus, okay? <laughs> so it was, there was this energy, there was this thing about like, what, okay, that's Mulabanda, where is it? I know it's not my anus. I had to do some research. So Mulabanda is the midpoint. It's like one and a half. <laughs> you know, number one is pee pee and number two is poo poo. So it's one and a half. It's the space between them. And like I said, for a woman, it's deeper up inside of you. That's Mulabandha. Uddiyana is the flying upwards. They go together. Mulabandha, Uddiyana, Bandha go together. So it's, it's kind of a pulling, drawing in and up, as opposed to out and down. Patabi Joyce used to talk about, don't let your energy leak. You take it, Mulabandha, energy leaking out and down. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Several years of practicing, experimenting. Oh, all right. You start to get what it's about. You take Mulabandha 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day? Are you serious? Like, what does that mean? I, I can't even do it for five minutes. <laughs> so when it's activated, it's on. It's like turned on and that's... It's, it's operating within the operating system of the six chakras below the eyes. The chakras below the eye center is for good, radiant health. You know radiant health? Do you know what radiant health is? What is radiant? What does radiant mean? Glowing. glowing. Radiant. When you're healthy, you're glowing with light. You feel good inside. The fire is burning correctly. You can digest your food. You have good mental capacity. You can understand information. If this fire is not working, this fire is not going to work very good. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. You get emotional or whatever, and then your appetite goes, Wah. or you go, rah, rah. you eat a bunch. For me, I just like, I just can't eat if I get emotional. I'm just like, nah, it doesn't interest me. Other people are like trying to fill the void. And what do they fill the void with typically? Sweet. Sweet. What's sweet? Sweet is kapha. It's that yummy, yucky, you know, stuff that you get from your mommy when you first nurse. That's kapha. The first taste you get is sweet. It's like, oh. Sweet is the heaviest taste. It's the most nourishing. It builds flesh. Kapha. You see? So, it's like, Oh, Ellen, I love you so much. Here's some broccoli. <laughs> you, you don't do that, right? What do you give? Chocolate. You give chocolate. You give something sweet, right? 
So if you're feeling like kind of anxious, nervous, like vata, like, oh my God, this is all I can't, ha- oh my, I can't handle my life. Oh my God, I'm so unbalanced. You reach for sweet. It's earth and water. It's kapha. You eat it and you go, ah, I feel better now. <laughs> Do you really? Not necessarily. It's fake kapha. Like good kapha turns into ojas. That's the secret. That's the all-chemical way in which a yogi can transform raw kapha into ojas. And then ojas is your aura and your, basically your, your auric field and your immune system. When you have that, you're strong. Your immune system's strong. Someone can sneeze on you and you don't go, oh God, I'm going to get sick. No, it doesn't happen. You're strong. You have good stuff going on. You see? So there's a difference, there's a distinction. So, what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm I'm, I'm, I'm painting a picture of, that there's a certain technology, there's a certain technology that you need to learn from someone who knows what they're doing. And so there's certain steps that you need to know about. Within Ashtanga, it's Ujjayi breathing. What does that actually mean? I can't go into all the details, but there's a certain thing that is important about it. The sound of your breath. When you're doing Ujjayi breathing, you have a particular sound going on, isn't it? What's the sound? Like the sea. Like the sea, and it's in your throat. So you're regulating the, you're reg- regulating the sound through your throat. It's not a nasal sound. It's not... It's... Smooth, fluid, like pouring oil. It's nice and smooth and fluid, and it's full and deep, and it's regulated, and it's it's it's. There's lots of different things about pranayama, breath control, how much breath you take in, how much breath you take out. If you're doing a pranayama, maybe holding it a particular, it has an effect on your nervous system. You see. Breathing is connected to your autonomic nervous system. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. It's on automatic. It's hardwired into your brain and your nervous system. It's going on automatically. You breathe a constant. You're all breathing, right? You're all still alive here? (laughs) Everyone's still breathing. When you eat food, it gets digested, right? When you eat some food, you're not like, oh, you know, I ate a potato. You know how to do that? Your body knows how to do it. It's on automatic. It's in your nervous system. Heart beating. It's not that fast. It's got a regular beat. It's, it's going. It's automatic. Now breathing, breathing is something you can tap into. Right? If you control your breath, you can enter into the nervous system and control other things within you. You can control and slow your heart down. You can change emotional states. You're like ready to kill somebody. Okay, I need to take a few breaths. I need to take some space and come back to you. Right? That's useful. Okay. Ah, sorry. You know, I was a little bit angry there. The breath changes your state of mind and body. Just like that. Just like that. It's good to know. It's good to understand how the breath can change different states of mind and body. Practicing every day, you start to get a a feeling for how to change different states of your body and your mind. And you start getting more in touch with like the sensations that are going on within your body. You feel your feet, you feel your legs, you feel the blood going. It's like amazing. You have to start with the gross physical stuff. I, I said that in my book. You have to start with like ABCs. You know, just like learning anything, you know, you got to learn your alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, G, you know, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, once you learn your ABCs, you can put some words together, right? Cat, dog, some sentences with a period, a paragraph. Oh my God, I can read a paragraph? Slowly, slowly, that's the way you learn. You go with kindergarten, then you go to the next level. Eventually, maybe you get a PhD, right? So you can't jump from kindergarten to PhD level. 
You have to go through certain steps and learning certain things about the aspects of, of yoga, of the asana practice, and all the other stuff I haven't even talked about. There's eight limbs in Ashtanga, right? Eight limbs. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharna, Dhyana, Samadhi. Okay? Eight limbs. One limb, Asana. Not very much. There's 196 sutras in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Have you heard of the Yoga Sutras? Patanjali's Yoga Sutras? 196 sutras. There's only two or three that talk about asana. In 196. <laughs> Crazy. But then what do we do? I do yoga. Oh, really? <laughs> You're just doing asana. It's a tiny little blip. You see? It's much, much more. It's much deeper. And a lot of it has to do with how your mind works. Like that's where all the problems you know, happen. You make friends with this thing, it's like a computer. You know, you open up your computer. If it's not operating correctly, it's, it's a mess, right? And then you, you plug in and you enter into the internet and you can access information or there's a virus or whatever, it screws everything up. Same thing with this. If you have viruses or certain things going on, it messes up the circuitry. The nadis. Did you know there's 72,000 nadis? I mentioned three. Shishumna, Ida, and Pingala. Three! Where's the 71,000 and 900? <laughs> right? A lot of nadis, man. And naughty doesn't mean naughty and nice. Okay, It's not like, oh, you're naughty. <laughs> there's a lot of circuitry going on. Have you ever seen the bodies exhibit? Like where they take like the skin off and the bones and you just see like the circulatory system or the nervous system? Those are nadis. Those tiny little capillaries that are in your finger. Or the nerve endings. It's like amazing. All the stuff that's going on. And we're completely unaware of it because it's going on automatically. But if you, if you connect with your breathing in such a way, you can enter into that realm. And then you have control over this thing, the body and the mind. It's kind of nice when you sit in the driver's seat, right? And the driver's seat is right here, right in the center of your head. Okay? So we have some time for questions. I didn't really get too much into Ayurveda. I could do a little bit more, but hey, you know what? I can talk to 12 o'clock. We don't have all night. So... Oh yeah, well that can happen afterwards. Uh, we do have some of, some of my book here. We ordered a few copies and I can sign it too if you'd like. Okay, that's at the end. So, how about we take some questions? Okay, anybody have a question? If not, I'll keep going. Yes? Yeah, well you said about the <clears throat> feeling of the love and you feel the ball and then you flow over. Uh -huh. I sometimes have that, but a lot of people outside this room, what you just said, mm -hmm. don't understand. So I keep on walking around with a lot of love, and people, I get smashed in the face, and it mm -hmm. makes me really sad, and mm -hmm. it, a lot of my energy just floats away in an outside world that's just too hard for me. Yeah. What do I do? You, you need to learn how to manage your energy, honey. Yeah. You need to learn how to manage it. It's basically, <clears throat> I like to use the example of, uh, have, you ever, have you ever gone to a well and put a bucket down in a well and then pull it back up? Have you ever done that? Okay, so let's imagine this is a, a bucket and you, go, you dip it down in, in the well and then you pull it back up. And then you, go, you notice there's no water in there. What the heck happened? Oh, and then you go, oh, look at all the holes. So... You have a lot of holes in your bucket. They're leaking. So you got to learn how to contain it. Containing it is like getting juicy. And then when you're full and it's overflowing, then it doesn't matter. It's just there. And then your discrimination also gets good. Again, as a woman, you need to be able to say no, yeah. yes, 
You know, you're a very beautiful woman. So guys are going to be hitting on you all the time like that. So you have to just go, no. Oh, yes, come in. You know, you may enter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want to hang out with you. That's part of getting stronger and then determining who is a yes and who is it. It's okay to say no sometimes. You're not just, oh, I just love you so much. Come here. And then people are like, Jesus, get out of here. You know? So you can't go around like that. That's the new age thing. Oh, I just love everybody. Everything's so wonderful and so I'm so free. It doesn't that's, work like that's that. That's not what I'm doing. I'm no, I'm not that. saying you. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, but it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do a lot of things for a lot of people and a lot of people are like, oh, relax, she's doing it. But it's just, it costs me a lot of energy that in the end, you know, I, I have to, I, I know I have to set boundaries. Yeah. You need to take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need to take care of yourself first. Number one, take care of yourself. Let me, let me talk about priorities too. This is an important aspect to kind of consider. We typically have our priorities completely reversed. Priority number one is spiritual practice, whatever that is for you. Not, not asana practice, meditation I'm talking about. Okay, Number one, your spiritual practice, your connection to consciousness, to God, whatever you want to call it. Number one. Number two is your health and well-being. That could be asana practice, pranayama, eating good, you know, getting enough rest, getting some sun occasionally, drinking good water, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff, taking care of yourself. Number three, friends and family. The energy you give to friends and family. Number four, it's a dirty word. It's a four-letter word. Work. <laughs> Work. So, what kind of priorities do most people have? They have work, number one. Number two is family and friends. Taking care of themselves is number three. And spiritual practice or spiritual life at the end. <laughs> Try it the other way around. See what happens. No, seriously. Again, all this stuff. It's almost two hours now. Don't believe anything I say. <laughs> Check it out for yourself. See if it resonates. It'll go like this. Mm -hmm. when, when good things happen, it goes, hmm. Right? When he goes, Ew, that's not good. Then you know that's like a sign, like a gut feeling where you go, oh. But we, we don't listen to it. It's like, oh, I just want to be loving and care. Come here. There's spiritual, there are vampires out there. There's people that just like to suck on your energy. You have to know where to go with it. You have to know where to go. You can't just be like, I, I know a lot of, I know a tremendous amount of like, spiritual loving healers and they're the most messed up people I've ever seen in my life seriously yeah. and I love them but they're always spent they're always like I'm so drained I'm so exhausted and this hurts and I can't sleep and my, but I'm healing all these people yeah. you know physician heal thyself you ever heard that one do doctors do that no they're just after symptoms now I don't have anything against doctors. There's probably a few in this room. Okay? If I break my leg, I'm not going to run to an Ayurvedic guy. Hey, could you fix this? I just got a gash in my arm. Could you like put some plants in there and stop the bleeding? No, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the doctor. He's going to sew it up. But as far as health and healing, they don't know anything. They're starting to come over a little bit. But they just don't get that kind of education. They get no nutrition. They don't talk about food. They talk about the four food groups, and the number one is meat. <laughs> so what kind of a food group is that? You know, like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So the context in which they're learning from is is skewed. You see. So, other questions. Uh, question about the ordering. About the what? About the uh, order and sequence of primal theory. So you mentioned oh. you. you yeah. But you're saying that uh, if you are not able to do a pose, then just go ahead, so skip the pose. Yeah, it that's the, what I heard you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, within it's not like, well, I don't like that. That just feels bad, you know, and, and being lazy or something. 
I'm talking about certain things. For instance, there's a pose in um, there's a pose in in primary series. It's called Johnny Shirshasana C. You know this one? Yeah, it's gnarly. It's like it's like a, a, a really radical pose. It's not really that fun for the knee. So if you have a knee issue, a knee problem, delete, take it out. Don't do it. Heal your knee, and then you can start exploring. You see? So you have to know when to delete and when to incorporate it back in. You have to heal, and then you can bring it back in. You see? You understand? And then there's modifications. For instance, this pose is a pose that people hurt themselves all the time. Knees are popping constantly. I can hear one going right now. <laughs> all over the world. Seriously. Seriously. Someone's popping their knee out right now. Because there's thousands of people practicing and they're forcing themselves into this pose. It's called Marichasana D. Okay? Put your foot half lotus and then you twist. If you're not flexible in your hip, this is not on the ground. If you can't do, your knee will pop. And if someone's forcing you to get into it, you need to slap them. <laughs> Forget about a hymn song. Just slap them. <laughs> Watch. You can do Marichasana D like this. Left leg under, put your foot outside, and then you go like this. And you get a nice twist. It feels good in the hip. You get good energy. Slowly, slowly, you open your hip. Slowly, 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 slowly. Oh, my hip is opening. Oh, wow, I can do it. Slowly, slowly. You see? There shouldn't be any pain. You're getting pain in a certain point. You know, doing your upward dog. Oh, my God, my lower back hurts. Oh, my God, my lower back. Oh, my God, my lower back. Oh, my God. And then you walk out of class going, oh, Jesus, my back. Or you're like this. <laughs> You're like tense and downward dog all the time. And then you walk out of class and you're like, wow, I love Ashtanga. It's just fantastic. <laughs> it's really great. Or one, you know, one shoulder's like that. You're like, oh, Ashtanga. It's just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really love it. What's the matter with your shoulder? I don't know. Is there yeah. something wrong with it? So you, you need to start paying attention, you see. And a teacher's going to see that. They're going to point stuff out to you and say, have you noticed that you're like, in downward dog, twisting one hand out a little bit more, what happens with the whole alignment? If you have one hand turned out a little bit, it distorts your shoulder and your spine goes, and then you do that every time you practice, and you have a pattern. You're doing that day after day after day after day. What's going to happen? It's like just logic. What happens? Yeah. You're, you're like, and then you're, you walk out of class like this. And you're like, I love Ashtanga, it's fantastic. I sweat and I breathe and I'm like, oh my God, it's just so amazing. <laughs> if you want therapy to happen, look, the primary series is called Yoga Chikitsa. Did you know that? It's called Yoga Chikitsa. Yoga Chikitsa means yoga therapy. When you do primary series correctly, one-on-one -on -one with a good teacher, you get therapy done. Bend your knees, stop here. Don't do that. Breathe a little slower. Oh, rest. Oh, come on, give me some more. It's all individual. According to your constitution, vata, pitta, kapha, who you are, your age, all the different things that a teacher needs to know. It's not an easy thing to be a teacher. You have to know a lot. You can't get it in a hundred hours. It's so ridiculous. The teacher training thing just it blows my mind. You can't get it in a month. You can't be a teacher in a month. It's, it's kind of interesting information, but you can't get it in a month. You can't get it in two months. You can't get it in three months. You have to take your time. You have to practice. You have to get to know yourself. And then you can start kind of experimenting with friends. <laughs> you know, and then you have to pay them. <laughs> they shouldn't pay you. <laughs> you should pay them. Hey, you want to try something? <laughs> I'll pay you. <laughs> Right? So it, it needs to be like that. But, but it's just turned into like this multi-billion dollar industry that's like ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. The yoga industry is completely ridiculous. I even, I even hate to say that I'm involved with it sometimes. It's like people ask, what do you do? It's like, I'm a plumber. 
<laughs> I deal with plumbing. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Could get a lot of money. This is like I'm a plumber. I am a plumber, actually. I work with the naughties. Yeah. Right? Plumbing. The plumbing system. I work with the naughties. I'm a plumber. I don't have to tell them that I'm a yoga plumber. No. Right? Another question. We have a few more minutes. Yeah. I want to know more things about meditation. Oh, goodness. In five minutes? In five minutes. Now go. Okay. Ready? Here we go. No, seriously, I can't do it in five minutes, honey. No, I did not say in five minutes. Uh, tell me what to do to improve my practice. Because, uh, yeah, I'm trying to uh, meditate. Uh, Where are you meditating on? Uh, what are you meditating on? Your navel or your heart? or What are you, med what are you meditating on? Your yeah, breathing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Look, you, you, can do, you can do mindful breathing and it could be nice for your health. It's not spiritual. If you do mindful breathing, you'll get very relaxed and calmer and you may be able to sleep better. It's not spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's physical. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you a distinction. You asked me. From here down, it takes care of your health. Chakra system. It's all about energetic system. Base chakra, second chakra, third chakra, fourth chakra, fifth, sixth. When you get really good at it, you, you're spinning all those chakras and they're all resonating and they're operating together. You know the chakra system? You know the mantras that go with it? I'll give you a little nugget. I'll give you a little gold nugget before we leave. Lum. You know lum? Lum. Everybody do it. Lum, 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 lum. Lung. Base chakra, earth, first chakra, bija mantra. Vam, 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 vam. Second chakra, water element, earth element, water element. Rum, 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 rum. Third chakra, fire. Yum, 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 yum. Yummy. Yum, yum. Heart chakra, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Hum, 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 hum. Lum, vum, rum, yum, hum, boom. You just activated them. Now you can take the stairs or you can take the elevator. There's a way of just take, just activating each one. That's the stairs. Lum, lum, <laughs> lum, bum, 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 bum. Or you focus, you keep the tongue on the roof of your mouth. You connect with Mulabana and you just pull the energy. It just goes right up the center channel. All the way up to here. And then you can drop it down through the tongue and it goes down to here. And you can center and gather energy there. So you just pull it up, circulate it, it goes back down. You start to collect energy here. This is like your, in, in martial arts, it's like your hara. It's like the juicy energy that like, they, in martial arts, it's like the power that people have when they can crack somebody or break a brick or a wall or whatever, or just, they're just peaceful warriors, basically. You don't want to mess with them, right? But they're, they're, they're relaxed. They're not aggressive people. But they've cultivated that energy. Like a Kung Fu master, he's not like aggressive, he's just chill. But don't mess with them. Right? Same thing. Don't, don't, don't ever mess with me. I'll, I'll wrap your leg around your head. So I'll tie you in a knot or something. No, but seriously, it's the same thing that you cultivate when you're practicing. The breath, the bandha, 
the positions. You start to activate certain chakras, energies, nadis. And slowly, slowly, over time, after practicing, you start to get to know yourself. Getting to know you. <laughs> getting to know all of You know that one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important. Get to know yourself. Self-realization before God-realization. You know Autobiography of a Yogi, Yogananda? Check out that book. That's a good book. Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. I lived in the area that he, he hung out in, and he died there in Encinitas. That's how I got involved with yoga. The birds are saying yes. Okay? So we're at the 9 o'clock mark. Is everyone happy? Yes. Okay. So... Instead of saying namaste, I usually say namasko. <laughs> thank you all so much. No, sir, thank you all so much for being here and being present and holding the attention and the focus. It's been so nice. I feel your love. I feel that it's great. Thank you. Okay. So we do have uh, some books. If you want me to, if you want to get one, there's not very many. There's just a few. So those of you that want one, um, we can do that. I think, uh, I don't even know what we're, I, I had to pay a tremendous amount of money to have it shipped and then they taxed me on it. It was like ridiculous. Oh, I said 25 euros? Oh, okay, that's fine. That's okay? Yeah, that's fine. That'll cover it. <laughs> but they tax, like they got the box and they're saying like, oh, another 100 euros. It's like, what? For what? Because it came into the hall. And, yeah. It's like that tax or something? Yeah. Or, I don't know. Anyway, is that okay? 25 euros? If you want to buy one. Yeah, I want one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll sign it. Whatever. Oh, we're, I think we're doing it. Um, are we doing yeah, it out well, there? Or? I think we can do it outside. Oh, okay. So All right, I, cool. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Sorry. Jesus. I'm so bad. Um, so, you, you, you know we have a center in Bali. Anybody who wants to come there, check out ashtangayogabali.com. Okay. We have a research center there. We're teaching Ashtanga. We also teach many other things. There's also a special conference that I'm holding and hosting. And uh, we've done two other ones. And the third one that's coming up in March is with some amazing teachers. And it's going to be with over 100 people in the, in the Mysore room with about 8 to 10 teachers teaching 100 people in the jungle. And then in the... Uh, in the later part of the day, we have two workshops every day by each person. Like, there'll be a workshop with me and Radha and then Chuck Miller, John Scott, every day. And then we have two sessions where it's like open forum, where you can ask any question about, you know, love and sex and money and whatever, whatever you want, whatever your heart's desire. Okay? So that's happening in March. Maybe I'll give this to you and you just post it and um, like that. Okay? All right. So I want to thank you, what? everyone, for coming. What? What? The tree course. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he keeps. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very soon coming up. I mean, not everyone can jump on the plane and come. It's in August. Wow. It's in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, every year we do a three-week course, and it's a training. It's an immersion. It's a deep immersion into Ashtanga Yoga, Ayurveda, Tantra, and meditation, pranayama for three weeks. Okay. It's happening in August, so next year we'll do it again. Once a year we usually do it. We do little five days, we do little you know, two week things. We're gonna do more and more now that I'm kind of coming out again. I just kind of shut it all down for several years. I was just like, oh whatever, I'll just teach some Mysore classes. But now with this tour, I've really felt like revived again, and I feel good. So we're gonna start doing more stuff. Okay? Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. I want to thank everybody. And if you want to give a donation for the Shanti Foundation. Mm. And yeah. if you would like to buy the book, it's really worth it. So yeah. thanks for coming. <laughs>